हेलो हेलो so guys anyone is in the live chat right now if you have any kind of audio problem just let me know if the audio is clear is not so guys you can comment in the comment section please right now i have got views of 3 uh, views just uh, if it uh, it's better if you guys let me know your names yeah you can just uh, uh, type in the live chat i'm just waiting uh, another 2 minutes so guys you can type right now Okay, bro. Sandeep Kant, thanks for your. Okay, then the voice is loud and clear. Then it's a good thing for us. So, is the screen any problem for you? Means the screen sharing is right. okay then even the screen is working i'm just changing the screen uh, tell me if there is any problem with that guys even if there is any kind of technical problem just please uh, post it in the live chat because i have to know uh, last time some people have faced a small technical problem in the webinar that's the reason uh, this time i am being uh, more keen about this technical issues also like uh, last time uh, i have got a complaint that uh, uh, viewers uh, youtube uh, it was showing that the webinar has ended before uh, it has started itself at the time of just 5 minutes have happened and the webinar has just ended okay then let's wait so guys it's time for the t1 so let's start the webinar so guys, welcome to mac talks so it's about magnizing times and in mac talks we'll be talking about automobile engineering nuclear science material science at the same time we'll be also talking about robotics mechatronics drone technology and also the kind of machinery manufacturing and also a lot of stuff so guys so today's topic we are going to start with automobiles so guys before that i have a small request that you guys can just subscribe my channel if you are not subscribed it and also please press the bell icon it would be even more better for me so you will be also getting the latest notifications to your mobile so guys now welcome to the topic webinar on basic mobile technology and recent innovations so guys this webinar would be only a basic overview about uh, automobile technology and at the same time what are the recent trends which have been shaping the automobile industry we'll be not going to stress most on the innovation part but the main point is that even knowing about the basic automobile technology you have to even know the recent innovation so this is just the basic webinar i'm not going to give any kind of calculation work i'm just going to going to uh, 
discuss about the design part of the automobile technology even the design means actually i'll be just telling which part is where or uh, what are the recent innovations in that so due to the time constraint today's webinar would be only a short one but at the same time i will try my level best to give the best content so guys here we begin so today's discussion topics are about general layout of an internal combustion car at the same time we'll be also talking about the tires and innovation and also chassis and innovation body panels and also about automobile and also i'll be discussing how the autonomous vehicle works and at the same time i'll be also talking about the drive trains and their types so at the same time we must also know about the engine placement in the automobiles when we talk about drive trains that's the reason the next topic is about the engine placement in automobiles and lastly i would be talking about the aerodynamics of automobile so guys so i'm going to begin now and right now we have uh, views around five people watching so guys just let me know if there is any problem just post it in the live chat i am also monitoring the live chat also so guys even if your friends are uh, going willing to join this webinar just please tell them right now because we'll be entering the topic and it would be even a loss for them so uh, we are going to enter the interesting topics guys right now so we are going to begin with the commercial ic engine car layout so guys what is a commercial ic engine car layout so it is about the daily usage cars which we are right now using in our daily life so these cars are actually called as the commercial internal combustion engine cars so such cars actually use the most common uh, layout and this is the layout which they use so you guys can see over here uh, you can see an engine being uh, present over there at the same time there is a uh, engine uh, beneath the bonnet and at the same time you can see from the engine there is a trans axle which is being uh, uh, transferring the power from the engine to the drive shafts and uh, it is being transferred to the rear differential so guys there is even an other point here we are called as the trans axle but these trans axles are actually covered in a transfer case so the transfer case is a protective casing which is being covering this uh, whole setup which is connected to the engine and at the same time you can see the drive shaft over here the front axles rear axles and the rear differential so this is just a very common internal combustion engine cars layout so guys now let's see so most of the webinars actually start with the what we call the concept of car chassis car classification and a lot of other stuff but right now in this webinar actually the uniqueness of this webinar is that actually this is a peer to peer communication system means we are going to analyze that kind of uh, uh, peer to peer communication in our webinar actually i am also of your own age and guys just i am going to make it more better because peer to peer communication is known as the best teaching methods mostly because in peer to peer communication you can just easily communicate with your friend and at the same time also just trying to communicate with you as a friend so guys i'm not a lecturer nor a professor nor nothing but i'm actually a car enthusiast and at the same time i'm a mechanical engineer so guys so since we have talked uh, about the car so let's start from the bottom of the car so from the bottom of the car we'll be finding the tires so let's start talking about the ties so we enter into the topic of ties so we are beginning with the topic of ties so let's see what is a tire so maximum tires use air in their uh, air tubes uh, so such kind of ties are called as pneumatic ties and these are the most common and uh, commercial ties which we find in the market and these are also the ties which are used in the daily life cars so guys uh, now you have to know about the material which we use in such kind of tires so most of the materials are synthetic rubber in the recent ages uh, before they used to use the natural rubber and also fabric wire along with some kind of carbon black 
actually why we use carbon black here is that uh, we have to color the tire uh, into the black color that's the reason we will be using carbon black and also some other chemical compounds actually why we use chemical compounds here are that rubber is actually a very soft compound and if it just uh, it can't even bear the load that's the reason we are using uh, uh, some chemical compounds like sulfur at the same time we'll be also talking about the tire threads actually why do we use threads in the tire so what are the threads <laughs> you guys have got a doubt over here so you can see the markings in the tires actually they would be a kind of pattern on the tire surface so this uh, pattern on the surface is actually called as a threads and let's see what these threads actually help us so the threads helping is actually providing traction to the tire and at the same time they also help the tire to run on a difficult kind of terrains actually most of the commercial tires are designed so that they can run on the urban side and and also on the rural side so let's see so tight threads use so guys actually i'm not going to read all the matter over here just i'm going to give the gist so actually the tie thread is designed so that we could remove the water I means if you are going to travel on a uh, watery road like for example if it has rained on the road the uh, road gets wet and in at a kind of circumstance if you just take a tire which has no threads it will start slipping off so to avoid that kind of slipping we have provided threads and at the same time also for the traction but it's an another topic but right now we are talking about the wet roads so what happens in the wet roads is that if we have given the thread uh, threading pattern on the tire uh, this gives a way for the water to go out uh, and uh, it also avoids the tire from slipping away from uh, from the road so this is the advantage of providing threads so guys if you want to read more about it uh, you can just pause the screen and just uh, check it out but in the live there is a problem actually if you pause it uh, if there is some kind of technical issues being uh, coming out so try it later again if you have uh, if you are interested in listening this webinar so guys actually there is an other important point which i forgot is that actually the depth of the thread in the tire is around 8 mm so guys uh, with this uh, thread uh, means with this thread we could easily avoid the water on the wet roads and at the same time dirt on the dirtiest roads so guys now we'll be talking about racing tires actually racing tires are called as racing slick so or also known as slick tires so what is the advantage of slick tires so guys before uh, telling you the matter i'm just going to show you the picture of it so this is the picture so you guys can find no pattern on such kind of tire it's completely flat and i mean flat means i mean it has no kind of pattern it's completely patternless so you guys can see the smooth rubber over it so guys why do we provide no uh, threads on the racing tire so there is an explanation for it actually for racing you require more traction whenever you have more traction from the tire means you will be having more and more acceleration if there is no contact between the tire and the road if there is a very least contact between the tire and the road even if you accelerate to the maximum you can't take your car i mean even at higher velocities you can't just take your car at that speed so to provide such a kind of acceleration in a very less time so this is a very good point for in the racing because they have to win over the opponent so by taking this point into consideration racing tires are mostly they do not have any kind of thread on them it's completely a block a rubber block so guys let's see its uses actually before starting the race you may observe that the racer uh, tries to burn the tires actually he used uh, he'll be taking off a lot of smoke from the rear end and this is called as burnouts so what is the advantage of doing a burnout guys so by doing a burnout uh, the tire gets heated up and the tire temperature changes so due to the higher temperature of the tire the rubber compound which is present in the racing slick or the racing tire just gets softened up when the rubber gets softened up you can expect a very kind of sticky nature from the rubber 
and this sticky nature helps to provide adhesion between the road surface and also between the tie surface so guys by doing this what is the advantage if we speak about it then it's the advantage that you'll be having more uh, traction forces so when you have more traction you can say that your car is going to have a very 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 good acceleration so guys this adhesion property also helps the driver to have very good control over the car or over his race car so guys let's see already i have shown you the image and also i told you so you guys have right now understood the importance of performing a burnout in the race cars i hope you have understood so guys actually uthen amla has posted that it's not contact it's friction yeah guys the friction is actually the contact actually so without contact you won't be having any kind of friction between the road surface and the tire and also the main important point in the vehicle tire is that actually you have to have a very good amount of traction rather than friction because having more friction may sometimes wear off your tires and that's a problem so even let me see any kind of messages are there so okay guys so thanks for visiting only six are watching right now so guys let's now discuss about the topic uh, regarding the innovation in tires so actually i have only going to talk about uh, four innovations and they are bh03 concept mosfil tires which is called as the oxyzine and also the airless tires or the non pneumatic type twill tires which is a kind of biomimicry from the coral structures or the coral reef structures which you find underneath the sea so guys there is an interesting topic over here but i am going to just uh, go through it so let's begin with the bh03 concept so guys what is actually the bh03 concept over here so this is a tire which is been designed from the goodyear but actually it's right now not in the market it's also a concept tire actually this tire is designed so that uh, whenever the vehicle runs i mean whenever the vehicle has started and is traveling this tire turns the heat energy from the tire into an electrical energy and this electrical energy is transferred to the batteries which is in the vehicle's uh, compartments and this uh, this helps in charging the batteries and at the same time actually we use uh, means uh, converting such a kind of heat energy requires temperature also if what happens if you just ride this car uh, cars in a, what we call ice uh, uh, means icy tracks for example in uh, uh, if you see in the foreign countries what happens is that uh, unlike india most of the foreign countries have snow on their uh, what we say snow on their roads and at the same time if we talk about kashmir it's impossible for this such a kind of concept so that's the reason it's still in its uh, developmental stages so guys let's expect uh, it to be more developing and at the same time we could use such a kind of tire in our future so guys you can also recall a concept called as the pjo electric concept which we use pressure energy and we'll be converting the pressure energy into the electrical energy so this is also kind of similar concept but actually there is no data available on such a kind of concept uh, i mean concept ties so these are all patents but i'm giving you an idea guys just try this out so next the next concept is the oxygen concept so what is the oxygen concept actually most of the people get uh, try to get rid of the moss which is being on the house walls actually you observe when it rains you will be having moss over all the walls so guys this moss is actually a very good thing and engineers have thought it in a very innovative matter what they have done is that they have applied it in the tires actually so what is the advantage over here so when you ride uh, when you use such kind of tire you can easily fight the pollution guys because moss is a unicellular organism and at the same time they also use photosynthesis and also the most interesting part of them is that they use carbon dioxide and they produce oxygen that's the reason this tire is named as oxygen so guys i i'm really very impressed with this tire actually using moss 
over the tires rim and we are filling that moss over the tires rim and it's really a what we call a very interesting matter i don't know in future what we are going to have another kind of set but really this is a very innovative thing and also really an accurate thing for me but guys it's a very good solution for fighting pollution so guys now we will be moving on to the next topic airless tires or the non pneumatic tire structure so i have earlier told you that the commercial tires which we use in the commercial cars are mostly using air tubes so these air tubes need to be filled with the air. that's the reason they are called as pneumatic tires so guys now we will be talking about the airless tires so you guys can see the tire structure over here it doesn't have any kind of air tubes in it it only has a very kind of spongy structure in between the tires so this spongy structure helps the tires to avoid the what we call as uh, making it a tubeless tire at the same time making it an airless tire even this tires have the first advantage is that these tires do not get them uh, get themselves punctured and at the same time they are also cost saving so guys there is a small problem with this actually uh since we are not using any kind of uh, air in uh, air in such a kind of tires and also you can see the spongy structure between these uh, uh tires uh, so with this spongy structure what happens is that whenever you get a obstacle it easily the tire deforms there and uh, this slight deformation actually doesn't help the suspension over here and that's the major drawback with this tire actually you will be having some kind of bumpy feeling when you use this tire but even researchers tra- trying so that they could eliminate this bumpy feeling and also the other problem with this tire is that actually this is somewhat heavy from the normal tires because it uses a uh, hardened rubber uh, to create the such a kind of complex uh, uh, spongy shape in between the tires and the rim but actually guys there is an also a very good advantage over it because you can use these tires in the what we call as off road activities you can combine these tires with suvs and it's really a very good combo guys i'm just saying also you can uh, these tires also gain the advantage of they can also run over land mines they can also take gun fire because they can uh, withstand such a kind of uh, impacts also so this can be also used in the military purposes also and also for the bulletproof cars so guys this is really a very interesting in- invention so guys let's see another kind of you know uh, invention so this is the tweel tire actually i was telling about the biomimicry of coral structure which we see at the bottom of the ocean so guys actually before talking about the coral structure about this tire so most of the members know about the coral reef structure which is at the bottom of the sea so guys i have just a very good question for you uh, what happens if earthquakes occur at the bottom of the oceans does this coral bear such a kind of impact actually the answer is yes most of the corals actually live up to an age of 1000 years and so on and this structure is actually very unique so you guys can see we are adapting such a structure in the tire so that uh, it will be helping us to uh, take any kind of impact take any kind of bump in the road structure at the same time this tweel tires actually use the biomimicry of corals at the same time you can uh, uh, i will also explain you the threading of this tires is actually 3d printed there are special stations so that uh, you could uh, in future if you use this tire you have to 3d print the threads o- over the tire and also it is highly reusable and it's also very cost saving so guys just a minute i will be coming right now So guys i'm back sorry for the inconvenience just a bit of an inconvenient sounds over there so guys actually i was talking about the style wheel dies actually these are also very much similar to the airless ties which i have showed you before 
you can see the structure over here here we are having a geometrical and symmetrical kind of spongy structure between the rim and the tire or the threading in this tires but when we compare to this tire you can see this is also a very kind of complex uh, uh, what we call has a very kind of good uh, spongy structure and this spongy structure actually helps in uh, taking out a, a lot of impacts for the uh, vehicle and also it helps of very good uh, so guys i'll be also making a special video on this tire right now i'll be skipping to the next topic so manoj bro hi so how do you feel about this webinar actually you just comment it in the live chat there yeah, are right now only three people are watching the webinar so guys i request you if you have any kind of friends right now with you just ask them to even join the webinar because i uh, increasing views also increases my motivation and i could even work faster so guys now let's shift to the topic towards chassis or the chassis of the car or automobile so chassis is a very important part in the automobile structure so guys let's see what it says so i'm just reading out the definition over here a chassis is the basic framework of your vehicle sometimes the chassis is only the frame while other times it includes the wheels transmission and sometimes even the front seats so a chassis is also most important components of the vehicle without this you won't have the car has a structure so guys actually this chassis is the backbone of an automobile so let's move so what are the types of commercial chassis which are right now being present in the daily life automobiles so one is the body on frame ladder chassis or the backbone tube chassis monocoque chassis subframe and x frame structures so let's see how these structures are actually so first before that the most commercial chassis which we see in our cars in the daily life is monocoque chassis actually this is also called as the unibody chassis because you can see how the structure is completely it's a complete kind of egg shell you can just compare it with the egg shell so guys you can see how it's a uh, how it's looking like a shell so why do we uh, make such a kind of monocoque chassis actually what is the advantage over here if you have more material in such a kind of chassis you will be having more rigidity you will be having good vibrational dampening and at the same time you can say that uh, it will be also having very good uh, stiffness and at the same time you will be also having a weight advantage it depends on the material also guys actually for monocoque structures we will be using aluminum maybe aluminum alloys or sometimes uh, we will be using steel structures most of the commercial available vehicles are mostly alloys and alloys uh, alloys like steel structures they may be alloys of uh, aluminum so guys let's see uh, the next kind of chassis structure so this is the body on frame ladder chassis so guys this chassis structure is the most oldest chassis structure and at the same time from the olden days to today we are using such a kind of structure right now uh, this ladder chassis is only being used in the commercial suvs or pickup trucks which have very kind of huge engines and are really complicated to build you can't use a monocoque structure for such kind of uh, uh, bigger bodies like uh, trucks and uh, other kind of uh, bigger vehicles so that's the reason we use this kind of chassis structure still now popular for bigger vehicles so this is a ladder chassis you can see how the structure of this chassis is it's like a ladder so that's the reason it's named as body on frame or ladder chassis the most common nickname is ladder chassis as i remember so guys is there any kind of audio issue for you you can just comment me in the live uh, live section because i just want to see whether my audio is uh, is good with you just please uh, post it in the live chat so i am moving on to the other chassis so guys this is the backbone tube chassis actually why do we name this chassis as a backbone tube chassis for example if we take our human body has a so for us for our kind of human body we will be having a backbone 
which is the spinal cord. You can see the spinal cord is a unique structure and it's a, a very kind of tubular structure. It's looking like a unified manner and it's connecting our whole body. It, in the same manner, you can see over here, the structure I'm going to mark it with the pen. So I'm using a pen over here. You can see the structure over here. I'm just drawing. You can see how the structure is over here. Actually, see how the chassis is being is constructed in the design of a backbone. And this is a kind of tubular structure. So guys, what's the advantage of tubular structures is that you can reduce the weight of the vehicle and at the same time, it'll be having very kind of uh, good rigidity and also you can also save spaces at the same time and these are also used in most of the trucks also in the olden days but recently only in the small cars so you can see how the structure is so this is about the backbone tube chassis as the name suggests it's a backbone it's in the form of a backbone and at the same time it's a tube because it's a tubular structure so let's talk about subframe. Guys, actually, I have talked about the monocoque and also the ladder chassis. What happens if you, we design a kind of hybrid between them? So how would it be? So guys, if we talk about the subframe, actually, we'll be having a, a structural components. At the same time, we'll be also having a monocoque structure in this. So I'm just going to show you an image of it. So this is a, I hope you remember this car structure actually, just try to guess it uh, while viewing the messages. Just please try to guess there. Uh, guess, try to guess this uh, car's name. Actually, it's a very popular sports car. I'm just hinting you guys, just try to guess it. It's also my favorite car. So guys, just try, 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 try. So no one is typing in the live chat, I hope. So guys, I'm going to just reveal it. Yeah, thanks guys. Saikaran, you're right. Actually, it's a Lamborghini Aventador. So you can see over here, I'm just going to use a pen over here. I'm just going to highlight it. So you can see over here, uh, the structure over here is actually a monocoque. While the structure over here is the uh, structural component which is a kind of ladder chassis combination you can see how it has been uh, integrated in a car so guys that's the reason it's called as a subframe and most of the subframe components you can see in the aircraft structures and also the high-end supercars so that other advantage with this uh, kind of cars uh, subsection or the, the subframe cars is that actually uh, it will be reducing the production time of such a cars because it has a modular design over it and also you can just uh, set it out actually you can observe most of the lamborghini cars have uh, the same kind of wind steel structure i mean the windshield structure and the seating structure because they use such a kind of subframe structure they uh, it helps them in their uh, production over there means they could easily manufacture such a car just taking that uh, subframe means the uh, monocoque structure which is in between which is uh, housing the dashboard or the seating so you can just pick up this uh, subframe and you can add the whatever components you want to the uh, I mean the structural components you want to this kind of frame and you can modify it with your engines uh, you can just change the drive shafts according to your use it's really a very kind of modular design it also helps the design engineers over it and also the manufacturing would also uh, cuts cost uh, for the company so that's the reason most of the high-end cars actually use subframe because these cars actually take a lot of time in their manufacturing by using such a kind of modular design you can just avoid the production cost and the other kind of stuff so now let's move to the X-frame chassis. Actually, guys, this X-frame chassis is also a kind of hybrid. Actually, you have already I've showed you the backbone tubular chassis or the backbone tube chassis. So you can find the similarity actually over here. I'm just marking it over here. You will be seeing the X actually over here. 
x in the chassis and at the same time you can see the similar ladder frame chassis structure over here so you can clearly observe it's a kind of combination of both the backbone chassis and also the ladder frame chassis so guys what is it giving the best advantage over here so guys this kind of x frame structure actually is, looks like a truss over here and at the same time you can expect how the truss can take the loads and also if you use such a kind of truss in the uh, i mean uh, in the chassis of the vehicle it's really going to add the stiffness the rigidity the torsional uh, what we call as a torsional uh, stiffness at the same time you will be also uh, be able to manage the weight you can also distribute the weight over the chassis there will be a uniform kind of weight distribution and so on actually you can also mount the engine according to your you i mean according to your choice because it even pro uh, i mean this x frame over here actually provides even the support for the transmission which is also reduces the transmission losses or the other kind of transmission vibrational issues so this helps in the vibrational dampening also so guys this is really a very good structure over here actually mostly we use this kind of structures and also i have already told you these structures are actually adapted in the suvs or the other kind of pickup trucks mostly so guys i'm just right now trying to change the topic again so what are the recent innovations in the chassis structures actually the recent innovation in the material of the chassis has been done mostly right now the high end cars actually are trying to use carbon fiber chassis because in the recent scenario or the recent trends what happened is that uh, we are changing our shift towards the evs or the hybrid vehicles so when we talk about evs the evs actually are electrical vehicles which use electrical motors so electrical vehicles have lesser efficiencies if the vehicle's weight is more so you have to cut the cost of i um, mean the you have to cut the weight of the vehicle over here so if you want to reduce the weight of the vehicle you require new material for the chassis and carbon fiber is exactly the thing so carbon fiber has the properties like it is really very strong material and at the same time it's even more stronger than the titanium and at the same time it's also very light in structure and it can also take a lot a lot of impact so that's the reason it also reduces the weight of the vehicle so you can use a, a normal vehicle and also you can improve the fuel efficiency of the vehicle you can also improve your top speeds of the vehicle by designing an aerodynamic structure also but the weight also matters for a race car actually so that's the reason you can see most of the top end racing cars or the top end supercars or hyper cars or the f1 racing cars actually use the carbon fiber monocoque chassis so you can observe, uh, you can just see how essentially they are using this kind of carbon fiber chassis in their vehicles so guys actually there is also the first case where they started using carbon fiber in their uh, f1 racing cars this came out from the f1 racing cars only by using the carbon fiber chassis in the f1 racing car what they have gained the advantage is that first thing they could reduce the weight of the car while reducing the weight of the car they had improved the efficiency at the same time with using the same uh, same way, uh, f1 engine uh, which will be using similarly for the steel uh, the steel monocoque chassis or the other kind of aluminum monocoque chassis actually when you use a same engine for this kind of aluminum monocoque chassis or the other kind of lightweight chassis there is a no kind of acceleration or speed gain or other kind of top speeds for the vehicle but when the when they have shifted their uh, shifted towards the material carbon fiber they have saw the gain that actually they could uh, increase the velocity of the vehicle with using the same engine because it has reduced the weight of the vehicle so you could have more torque from the vehicle uh, so that you a vehicle could use more torque rather than sacrificing some of the torque for the uh, weight of the vehicle so this became an advantage while using the carbon fiber chassis and at the same time it also helped the driver safety actually the first accident also happened in, uh, while using such a kind of chassis uh, the driver this car uh, 
lost control over the car and he just uh, hit the road sideways and uh, the driver was amazingly saved actually because the carbon fiber actually took off all the impact towards it uh, f1 uh, f1 i mean uh, the nose of the f1 car actually is made of the carbon fiber so it actually took off all the impact from the uh, crash and uh, actually it saved the driver's life so that's the reason it uh, slowly it has become a kind of mandatory thing for the f1 cars uh for the driver safety so guys you can see how the chassis actually plays a vital role in the efficiency of a car so i have already told you chassis actually affects a numerous factors of a car so that's the reason chassis is rec uh, recommended as the best or the main component of the car so actually there is another topic actually i I just wanted to discuss before I just I'm going to show you the carbon fiber chassis structure. So you guys can see over here, you can see how the carbon fiber chassis structure looks. Actually, it is made of complete carbon fiber. It has been molded and it has been heated up, heat given heat treatment so that it can be solidified in such a shape. So I'm just going to few, uh, read a few important points about this monocoque, which I just missed out. So you guys can understand. Actually, this is a case study of a McLaren racing car. Actually, I hope you guys remember McLaren. So let's see what are the advantages which McLaren has gained from this. And it's from its case study. So actually, these fibers are 500% stronger and then even the highest grade titanium however despite this the entire cage including the roof engine air intake system and also the battery compartment weighs only 90 kg so guys i have already told you when you when the weight of the chassis structure reduces you could also gain uh, a top speed i mean the, you could also use the torque you could completely use the torque of the vehicle so the other point is that uh, here the carbon fiber is certainly not the cheapest material to use but the mono cage engineering is a testament to its ability to provide exceptional strength without compromising weight so guys when if you want uh, any kind of uh, higher strength you uh, it would automatically you can observe a con that it adds more weight to the vehicle but when you start using carbon fiber you will be having the same exceptional strength and at the same time you will be having the uh, you could you, uh, you don't need to compromise with the weight issues also because it's also light in weight so guys i'm just right now going to talk about the other innovation regarding the chassis so guys actually right now most of the high end supercars or the audi or the mercedes or other kind of lamborghini uh, right now are trying to use the active chassis or the active suspension system but actually this active chassis means what actually just i'm going to read out a few minutes and this is also the case study of uh, your mclaren racing car so let's see uh, this kind of chassis provides supercar to adjust its ground clearance with the increase in speed actually guys you can observe most of the high-end supercars actually have very less ground clearance when they have very less ground clearance it means that they could have more stability with the road surface and also they want top even at higher speeds so if you want to have more kind of ground clear i mean if you want to reduce the ground clearance actually you can't do that actually because there may kind of any kind of irregularities if you use uh, it in the urban roads or the urban streets so to compromise uh, to i mean uh, without compromising with such a kind of matter what the recent engineers have done is that they have computerized the chassis of the supercar so how is the computerizing done actually whenever the car speed increases from the issue there would be a signal to the chassis uh, control unit that you have to reduce the ground clearance of the vehicle because the car is going to speed up when when you start reducing the speed of the car i mean when you start increasing the speed of the car there is an other issue actually the aerodynamic issue if you have more ground clearance between the 
uh, chassis and the road what happens is that your car may uh, experience lift so to reduce the lift we have to reduce the ground clearance of the car guys don't worry about the lift actually which i have told you about the aerodynamics i will be discussing this matter in the last of the topic or the last of the webinar because it's also a very key uh, keen issue which is the uh, most cars actually face so right now we'll be only talking about the computerized chassis structures so in this what happens is that uh, actually this not only controls the ground clearance but also it actually controls the stiffness of your uh, suspension suspension springs so that uh, when you are going to take a turn at the top speeds for example you can expect a racing car like mclaren uh, going at the top speeds of 300 kilometers per hour or around 200 miles per hour or 280 miles per hour what happens is that actually when they start taking uh, uh, the turning the car may experience not only lift but also the impact the heavy impact while it's turning and this may cause a, what we call as an imbalance in the car forces and it can easily overturn the car. So re to reduce such a kind of overturning at the same time to uh, take that impact while uh, turning your car at a curvelet, the stiffness of the springs has to be increased. So this active suspension or the, this active computerized chassis system actually helps the car in doing that. So this actually has showed a very good result. So most of the recent high-end cars are uh, using this kind of computerized ch uh, chassis structures in the supercars. So guys, I'm just going to ch uh, go to the other topic. We also talked about the carbon fiber monocoque. So now it's time to talk about the body panels. So guys, we have talked about the tires. We have talked about the chassis which is uh, we, i have told you we have will be starting from the bottom of the car so i have completed the topic regarding tires i have also completed the topic regarding chassis now i'm going to talk about the body panels which is uh, next to the uh, chassis actually what is the purpose of using a body panel actually body panel covers the car I'm going to show you an image right now. You can see over here the red color marks, which is actually the body panels which are covering the chassis. And also they are filling the void between the chassis and the uh, doors or the back door and the front doors. You can see over here. They are also filling the gaps between the bonnet and the chassis structure. So guys, actually body panels are really very much important in doing so. And also they are also at the aesthetics of the car because when you use very good kind of body panels when you take a very good shape for the body panels over the car it really gives a very good aerodynamical look or it also gives the aesthetic uh, means it al also adds the aesthetics of the car actually here the aesthetics of the car means actually the beauty of the car or the handsomeness of the car so you see most of the racing cars actually use these kind of body panels so most of the conventional body panels are made out of steel metal or the sheet metal so but uh, when you we talk about uh, high-end racing cars or the high-end supercars or some kind of recent commercial cars they have shifted towards the carbon fiber because thanks to this recent innovation it has reduced the weight of the car so it also has helped us increase the efficiency of the car even even before carbon fiber people also used to use fiberglass which is also other lighter material but it is not as light as carbon fiber and also the frps which are known as the fiber reinforced, uh, reinforced plastics so actually these fiber reinforced plastics also are uh, very lighter uh, lighter but actually these are uh, using such kind of frps are somewhat costly process so right now people are just uh, shifting towards this. So right now, what is going to shape this uh, automobile industry with the body panels? How is this body panels going to shape the automobile industry? If we just talk about it, let's see the recent innovation which has come into the body panels. So guys, just take a guess over it. How are we going to use this body panels? It's really going to be an amazing thing. Just before that, I'm just going to give you a small I mean, I will be giving you a guessing time. So you guys can just uh, text me in the live chat. 
So welcome Anand sir and also Ramesh sir. I just didn't see you in the live chat. So that's actually only we are having five people watching. <laughs> so it's not a problem for me. So guys, actually just take a guess how we are going to use body panels in the recent innovations. So guys, just try, try, try. Just try to type it in the live chat. I'm just giving you guys uh, other kind of 10 seconds or 20 seconds for you. Time is ticking off guys. Just guess it off. Try, 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 try. So guys, I'm just going to open the surprise now. So this is the innovation which is being happening in the body panels. The car body panels are right now serving as a battery. So guys, this is really a boon for the EVs or the electrical vehicles because we could reduce the weight uh, by, we, we don't need to add any kind of additional batteries to the vehicle. So by making the body panels itself as a battery, we'll be, uh, we'll be cutting the weight of the batteries. So this also increases the efficiency of an EV. So guys, this is really a very good innovation right now. So let's see how it's being happening. So thanks to the latest nanomaterials, which have made this extremely thin and uh, strong carbon fibers that replace the, uh, what we call as the car steel body panels and also being used in the roofs, doors, bo uh, bonnets, floors. These panels have been used to develop the, develop has the car's battery. And also it has been cutting the weight of the car to minus 15%. So this is really a gain guys actually. So guys, according to the nano material, I just want to discuss the topic of graphene. I will be detailedly discussing this graphene topic in my next videos or my upcoming videos. But actually, how are we going to uh, use these body panels as the batteries? Means actually, recent the innovations have been showing uh, that we could use graphene as a material which could be used as a potential energy storing material. So if we start applying such a kind of material in this kind of body panels, it would be really uh, other kind of benefits. Maybe in future, we may be uh, via, with the help of using graphene, we may cut the weight of the vehicle to similarly 50%. It would be really a boom, guys. Actually, this carbon fiber is also made of the same material of, I mean, uh, similar to graphene. It's also similar to graphene. What happens if we make a composite out of graphene and carbon fibers? It would be really an amazing result. So guys, but this is a, a kind of research issue, but graphene is right now a very, very highly costing material. So it's also difficult even we don't even have a good uh, graphene manufacturing methods right now to uh, commercially manufacture graphene and use it as an energy uh, storing device. So that's the problem right now. But in future, I'm guessing out, maybe there may be a composite of carbon fiber. And at the same time, we may have an graphene uh, hybrid. So guys, this is my idea actually. <laughs> so I'm expecting you, do you guys even have any kind of uh, ideas with you right now? You can just share it in the live chat. I'm just getting bored. So guys, <laughs> you can just type it in the live chat also. So now I'm going to just move to the other topic. So now we'll be talking about the types of an automobile. So guys, there are four types of automobiles. One is the internal combustion engine vehicle, as I told you earlier, which, are, which is also the commercial vehicle, which we see in our daily life. And also the electrical vehicles recently, which have come into the market and also they are also commercial. We are also seeing them in our daily life. For example, the best example is Tesla. Even though it has not entered into India, uh, there are also other vehicles from Mahindra like E2O and also other kind of companies which have been right now booming up. And also from the Tata's also we have been seeing electrical vehicles. Now if we talk about hybrid vehicles. So guys, hybrid vehicle is a kind of fusion between an IC engine and an electrical motor. We'll be having both the characteristics of an IC engine at the same time we'll be having the advantage of the electrical motors also. So next we'll be talking about fuel cell vehicles. So guys, let's see what are these topics. So as I told you earlier about the Vehicles are already told, showed 
layout of the so i'm just going to skip that topic and going to enter into the electrical car so in the electrical car guys you can see over here we have an integrated solar roof actually we don't have any kind of commercial solar cars in our uh, daily life because we are not, uh, we have still not developed such a kind of car till now which can uh, solely run on solar power so that's the reason most of the electrical cars are right now integrating solar roofs or other kind of solar panels in on their bonnets or uh, on their doors so that uh, they can use them as their recharging sources resources so this will also help an electrical car while it travels it can also charge itself so guys there is an other thing you can see in this structure cars uh, general layout of an electrical car you can see over here we are having batteries over here tons and tons of batteries <laughs> not tons actually it's a cluster of batteries being present over here they are nicely packed uh, in the chassis you can see how they are traveling uh, from the transmission parts to the seating below the seating part and also at the rear compartment or the batteries compartment you can see how they have been uh, how well nicely clustered and how uh, neatly packed uh, like uh, they are also saving the space in the car so guys we have to give an hats off for the electrical cars engineers actually for placing such a kind of uh, battery placement in the chassis so guys actually there is an also an other advantage since we have talked about chassis uh, when we integrate these batteries in the chassis there is an other kind of uh, advantage over here so the if we talk about the advantage is that you will be having more strength through the chassis uh, so because batteries are actually filling the spaces in between the chassis structure so right now it's a kind of adding more material to the chassis so you will be having more stiffness at the same time you will be having more uh, tolerance towards the what we call as the torsional forces or the other kind of impact forces being acting on the vehicle so guys but there is also an other issue actually when you cluster such a kind of batteries in such a manner what happens is that there would be an overheating issue in between the batteries so how are you going to dissipate this heat from the batteries actually in the commercial cars we use radiator and in this electrical car electrical car also we will be using a kind of cooling system which is similar to the radiator and fluid lines actually pass all over these battery clusters so that the fluid lines exchange the heat from the batteries to the fluid inside the fluid lines which may be mostly water or other kind of interesting coolants right now which are electrical cars are adapting like even ammonia mixtures to cool rapidly cool the batteries so because why are they cooling the batteries or uh, is heating a problem maybe the most uh, uh, most out of your pe uh, people so i'm just going to clear it out most of the batteries which we use in electrical cars are actually made out of lithium ion cells so or lithium polymer cells so these lithium or ion or lithium polymers which are called as uh, uh, lipo cells or uh, lion cells uh, what happens is that whenever heat uh, heating takes place in the battery it decreases the efficiency of the battery so to avoid that uh, decrease in efficiency we are going to cool the batteries so that we make uh, we can have a better efficiency in the power uh, power sources of the car so when you have better efficiency in the power source of the car you can expect better efficiency from the car also so that's the reason this is the entire setup of the electrical car guys actually there is also the other part which i have not discussed uh, transmission plus electrical engine over here actually don't confuse electrical engine means the electrical motor over here and at the same time you can see the complex power electronics being used over here which are traveling towards the electrical engine is being integrated with the electrical engine and also the transmission you can see how complex it is and also guys there is a high voltage electrical cable which is being used for charging the batteries over here because actually the amperage of such a kind of vehicles is actually more and more for example there may be around uh, mm, what we call as 1000 amps maybe because actually 
one kilowatt or I mean actually most of the electrical cars actually have a battery backup of around 60 to 80 kilowatt hour. So you can expect 60 to 80 kilowatt hour means 60,000 watt guys actually it means 6,000 day really it's a really I mean I'm sorry 60,000 so but actually we'll be using only cables around uh, what we call uh, the 20 amperes or around uh, 30 amperes for charging the vehicle but recently the most uh, most of the market uh, charging cables are around uh, uh, one amps or two amps because the battery backup is really low they would be around really nearly uh one kilowatt for uh, hour to around uh, six kilowatt hour so that's the reason you don't require such a kind of uh, battery charging facility but for high speed uh, cars like tesla electrical vehicle they require they, requ uh, they demand a very good or uh, they demand a higher battery backup so that's the reason you need to have a very good charging unit with higher amperages or higher ampere ratings so that you could charge your batteries as fast as possible so guys now we'll be moving on to the topic of hybrid cars so guys actually we'll be also talking about the challenges of a hybrid car designing a hybrid car so I as earlier as I told you that hybrid car uses both the electrical engine and also the internal combustion engine. Means we in this car we'll be having an electrical motor at the same time the commercial ICE engines we see in our daily life. So designing such a car means we are adding two kind of power sources or two kind of driving sources. So how far are we going to have losses? You may have a doubt over it. Actually, there is a problem over here. IC engine cars, actually, these cars are actually heavier weight than the electrical vehicle cars. Because electrical vehicles uh, have very less weight because uh, it will be uh, having less weight means you will be having a more efficiency from the car. Since you are using an electrical motor in the hybrid car and you are also using an IC engine, it's going to add more weight to the uh, hybrid car. So this is uh, a complex problem which we are going to arise which is arising over here so how are we going to solve this problem so guys it's also very simple actually we'll be using lighter weight chassis we'll be using lighter weight materials like as i discussed earlier they may comprise of frps fiberglass or carbon fiber mostly right now in the recent days people are shifting towards carbon fiber and due to its more and more uh, production the carbon fiber is also getting cheaper right now so you can expect it uh, we are going to handle the weight issues of the car means we are going to cut the weight of the car by using light and weight materials or composite materials but at the same time we are also planning it accordingly so you can see we'll be having a battery backup also a fuel tank over here for fuel storage and also you can see the entire car is completely made of uh, light and weight materials so guys actually these hybrid cars may also include a solar panel which is right now not being this i mean uh, is not there in uh, in this image but there may be a chance that even solar panels may be integrated in hybrid cars so i'm just going uh, just giving you an overview over here that's it so now i'm going to change the topic guys now we'll be discussing about fuel cell cars actually what is the fuel cell cars and uh, recently Apart from EVs, uh, people are right now thinking how to power EVs. Actually, what happens if we uh, remove batteries and also use some kind of other kind of renewable resources or other kind of eco-friendly resources? So by doing just such a kind of research, people have found that fuel cells can be used as a, such a kind of alternative resource. So how is a fuel cell actually functioning? Actually, guys, just let's uh, go to the topic uh, or let's go back to the topic of electrolysis so we'll be start doing a reverse engineering over here but before that let me remind you how electrolysis performs so if we talk about electrolysis so you can see that in electrolysis we'll be using two electrodes of two different materials two different conductive materials and they may be copper and the other one may be zinc other may be a carbon cathode or other may be a kind of uh, aluminium material so on so 
what happens is that when we pass electricity through these electrodes water starts performing lysis for itself means lysis means here is death or death of a compound over here means because the compound is breaking its chemical properties like it's being breaking into hydrogen and oxygen in electrolysis but now what happens if we take both the oxygen and hydrogen from the atmosphere and we inversely pass it to the electrodes or to the electrolytes in the uh, electrolysis setup boom it would be a reverse kind of uh, you'd be producing a reverse electricity from the source or from such a kind of setup i hope you guys have understood it so guys just uh, give me a live chat just uh, you're watching it so you could just uh, uh, post a post in the live chat that uh, you are understanding it or not because this is a kind of complex topic which i may try to make it simple i think it has ended up in complex manner i'm just waiting for your message guys otherwise i would be moving in another five seconds or 10 seconds because time is also a concern over here guys so guys then i'm moving on i hope you have guys understood about the fuel cell cars also in this fuel cell cars i'll be just uh, discussing about the layout which i forgot it uh, so in this fuel cell cars you can see you will be having a fuel cell over here the greener part over here i'm just going to draw highlight it you can see the greener part which is called has turned as a fuel cell over here at the same time from the fuel cell some part of the electricity is being transferred to the battery pack over here so guys why do we require batteries over here actually so guys to initially start the vehicle you require a battery pack and also sometimes you may run out of from the uh, fuel from the fuel cell so or the chemical may dry up in the fuel cell so to avoid that we'll be using a battery, a battery pack over here so that it may be an advantage an added advantage for the user or the driver so that he could drive the car safely to other repair centers or so on rather than depending on the fuel cell but actually you can see over in this layout we'll be having a hydrogen tank actually guys we won't find hydrogen in the atmosphere abundantly for such a kind of reaction so what we are going to do is that we'll be uh, taking the hydrogen and we'll be inducing that hydrogen into the fuel cell we'll be forcefully inducing such kind of hydrogen into the fuel cell and also oxygen is anyhow present in the atmosphere and we'll be taking advantage of such a kind of oxygen to perform the reaction in the fuel cell and that electricity is transferred towards the electrical motor so guys there is also a fuel tank neck which is actually used to fill the fuel and also to fill some of the hydrogen gas into the fuel cell also for an instant reaction so you guys can see this uh, battery backup and also the fuel cells electrical lines are converging with the electrical engine over here so from the electrical engine there is a power transmission taking place to the tires so this is about the propulsion or the i mean uh, how the fuel cell car works so guys just now i'm going to change the topic let's move on to the next topic it would be about autonomous cars so guys autonomous vehicles which is also short termed called as avs similar to evs so guys avs can be evs or ic engine cars so just don't get you confused by yourselves but mostly autonomous car vehicle means it has an autonomous system in the vehicle so what is an autonomous system over here so actually the right term which we use for the avs is that for the autonomous system which is inside the, the vehicle is that it is called as the av technology stack or the autonomous vehicle technology stack so stack means you guys can understand it literally you will be stacking off a lot of uh, parts nearby or you will be stacking a lot of bottles like you do it in the supermarket you will be placing the similar kind of parts at i uh, mean similar kind of items in a similar place or at one place it's called as stacking so guys now let's see what is a autonomous vehicle so autonomous vehicle is actually the autonomous driving is a by product or the, the product from the sensors actually if you want to drive a vehicle autonomously 
without any driver's help the vehicle must know that uh, how to drive or it must sense the surrounding of the vehicle so to sense the surroundings of the vehicle we'll be using sensors to detect the obstacles or the people or the other kind of stuff which is on the road so this sensors actually help the uh, vehicle to drive itself but at the same time we are using a lot of sensors over here so this usage is actually termed as sensor fusion so having more sensors is actually we are collecting more data from the sensors at a time so this is called as the sensor fusion or sensor fusion method so now if we talk about avs apart from the sensors there are also compute elements which are on board on the vehicle which are used to process the data which is being collected from the sensors so that actually how is the vehicle driving itself actually using sensors doesn't mean that sensors are going to directly control the vehicle sensor just going to give you an feedback to the vehicle or the feedback to the compute elements that there is something ahead of you or there's something behind of you or there's something aside of you so in this manner sensors help you but actually here the main part or the main processing is done by the compute elements or it can be a like a kind of small computer inside the vehicle so this compute element actually decides what to do and decides how to drive the vehicle so at the same time this compute element also when it collects the data from the sensors there must be also an other part also an essential component which is nothing but the driving assistance software because the compute element must also know how to decide so how to decide is based on the driving assistance software so this is the stack how it looks so this is the av technology stack you can see over here in this tech stack you can observe the application uh, is from the driving assistance software in this stack you can see how the driving assistance software is connected with the sensor fusions and also is uh, related with the mapping it's related with the cpu or gpu or custom or the and the other part of sensors like radar lidar sonar and also our camera so guys actually you may have a doubt what is lidar so guys i'll be just terming it out lidar means actually depends on laser uh, to detect the obstacles while sonar depends on ultrasonic sounds to depend on the obstacles while radar is also using sounds but actually it also uses other kind of ir rays to detect the obstacles and camera guys actually most of the guys in recent days know about cameras and uh, actually i'll be giving you a best example in the recent days mobile you can see a feature called as ai camera or the artificial intelligent camera which we are using in our daily life in the recent days so when you face this camera towards any kind of object it directly names the object over it so we are using such a kind of same software in the driving assistance software same uh, we are using the same kind of similar app or the similar kind of code in the driving assistance software so that the camera while visualizing the uh, obstacles ahead it could detect what, uh, which kind of obstacle it is which kind of shape it is apart from the radar lidar or sonar so guys this helps the vehicle uh, to send a other kind of uh, artificially intelligent feedback to the uh, cpu or the gpu or the custom made uh, uh, compute element actually here cpu means the central processing unit or gpu means the graphical processing unit actually when you use camera you require a graphical processing unit rather than a cpu action at the same time here what you mean by a custom based uh, uh, compute element means actually some companies design their own cpu plus gpu so it will be called as a custom based element which is designed by the company so finally what is the goal of an automated driving stack it is automated driving guys actually the best answer so by using such a kind of method we are able to guide the vehicle autonomously or it can just uh, the vehicle can drive itself without uh, without the need of a driver so guys just i'm going to move on to the next topic it's the sensor fusion on avs actually i told you about sensors sensor fusion methods you can see over here i am having a tesla model over here uh, 
I'm having a Tesla model over here. You can see how many sensors are placed in the car. It's the top view of the Tesla model car. You can see where, where the sensors are placing. Sonar, which is placed in the uh, orange color, you can see 12 sonars are being used on the car. So, uh, six are used on the rear side and six are used on the front side. And also a radar, green color one, which is being used on the front side of the car. And also cameras are being used. Cameras are eight cameras are being used. Uh, in eight cameras, two cameras are being placed on the side mirrors and one is in the dashboard, uh, I mean, at the windshield or on the top of the windshield. And the other, uh, other cameras are placed in the sideways of the car. So you can see Nest is a Ford car. Actually, this is uh, this Tesla car is actually using less sensors while the Ford car is actually using more sensors. So guys, you can also see over here the color code which represents the camera. Blue color is representing the cameras over here on the top of the roof, which are facing to the sideways of the car at the same time, the front side of the car. And also there is a radar over here at the front of the car. And also I have already told you this Ford car is using sonars. It is using four sonars at the rear and uh, six sonars at the front. So guys, these are actually the sensor fusion is done so that we could precisely detect the obstacle ahead of the car. So what happens if you use more sensors in a car? Uh, similarly like this uh, Ford model. If you use more sensors in a car, the advantage is that you will be having more refined data so that you, uh, the car can decide, okay, here there is a, an obstacle over here or you could just, it will be having more resolution over here. You can just decide perfectly or precisely regarding the obstacle. But when you start using less sensors, you'll be having low data or the low sensor data which is available and the car can just, uh, can't not decide whether to take the step or not. But when we talk about the cost, when you use less sensors, the car is cheap and it also has uh, uh, more efficiency because it consumes more fuel, um, it uh, consumes less fuel because there are less sensors naturally on the car. And most of this uh, AVs are right now designed are actually based on the EVs only. So such kind of autonomous electrical vehicles if they use a lot of sensor on these autonomous vehicles, what happens is that the battery backup dries up fastly. But uh, if you use less sensors, you'll be saving the battery itself over here. But when it comes to the uh, Tesla's case, you'll be having an advantage of saving the battery. But when you come into the Ford case, you can't save the battery guys. Actually, you are having more and more sensors over here. So this kind of system is more suitable for the ICE engine cars where the Tesla system is more useful for the electrical vehicles. And this Tesla system makes, uh, this uh, Tesla sensor fusion actually makes the Tesla car more cheaper while the sensor fusion of the Ford makes it somewhat expensive from the Tesla. So guys, this is about the sensor fusion on AVs. So guys, now let's move on to the topic of drivetrains. Actually, I have, moved, I have talked about how a vehicle works from the bottom. I have started, I have told you about tires, I have told you about the chassis, and I have also told you about the body panels. Now it's time to know the internal structure of the vehicle, which is none other than the drivetrain of the vehicle. And how are we going to power the wheels? So if you want to transfer power to the wheels from the engine, you require a drivetrain or a system which is called as drivetrain. So in this drivetrain, you can see this is the general layout of a drivetrain. We'll be having engine ahead, uh, ahead in the car and later on we'll be having a transmission connected to the engine. And at the same time, you'll be having a propeller shaft and from the propeller shaft, you'll be connecting it to the differential. And from the differential, the power is transferred to the uh, tires from the rear axle shafts. So guys, now, uh, now let's discuss the types of drivetrains. But before going to discuss about the types of drivetrains, I just want to clear the doubt between the transmission and the drivetrains. Actually, 
power we are going to transfer to the tires then most of the uh, people think that it's a kind of transmission but transmission is the wrong term guys if you use it uh, instead of drive train for powering tires actually trans uh, transmission is a dis uh, deciding or a power deciding device or power reduction or increasing device which is used by the driver so that he could decide how much power should be transferred to the drive train of the vehicle so this is the key difference between the transmission and the drivetrain so guys now let's move on to the drivetrain tripes so this is also a general kind of block diagram of the drivetrains so you guys can see how it is so now let's talk about the drivetrains anatomy actually this is the drivetrain which i have told you uh, in the general layout so this is the most common layout in the commercial cars uh, or uh, the most of the daily life cars which you see on roads so there would be an engine ahead from, uh, there would be a gearbox connected to the engine which is called as the transmission and from the gearbox you will be transfer uh, transmitting the power through a pro propeller shaft to the differential and from the differential you will be transferring it to the tire so this is a common kind of trans i mean uh, drive train and this drive train is actually named as rear wheel drive or the two wheel drive system so guys why is it named as rear wheel drive you can see over here the power is actually transferred to the rear wheels so it is termed as a rear wheel drive train or the rear wheel drive or a true two wheel drive because here only two wheels are driving while the front wheels are driven so guys now i'm going to uh, talk about the next uh, drive train which is the front wheel drive system so in this front wheel drive system this is also called as a two wheel drive system but the point is that this is you could clearly compare it with the rear wheel drive you can see here the the entire setup of the power transmission or the power drive train is entirely set up at the front of the vehicle or at the beneath the bonnet of the vehicle so you can see how the engine is connected to the clutch to the transaxle and it's connected to the transmission and from the transmission it's directly connected to the tires the power is directly transferred uh, by using drive shafts so guys here in this front wheel drive system we are not going to power the rear wheels so these rear wheels are now driven wheels while the front wheels are driving wheels so now let's go on to the other drive train which is called has the four wheel drive so in this four wheel drive train what happens is that actually we will be powering both the front wheels and also the rear wheels but when the vehicle starts means uh, when we use such a kind of drive train in a vehicle this vehicle actually starts with its rear drive train and it uh, and if you want to use the front wheel drive train the driver has to engage the lever uh, at the side uh, at the transmission so that uh, he could uh, transfer some power from the engine to the front wheels so guys by doing this actually what is the advantage and this system is actually used in mostly in the suvs or the sports utility vehicles and also the off road vehicles because off road vehicles actually travel in a very rugged terrain and such a kind of rugged terrain what happens is that in the rocky terrain the vehicle may get in stuck between the rocks so you can't sometimes generally uh, push the vehicle with the help of the rear wheels you require the help of the front wheels uh, to overcome such kind of obstacles so that's the reason uh, we will be using the four wheel drive mechanism so guys there is an, also an other kind of drive train but it is also the similar drive train but it is called as the all wheel drive system so what happens in all wheel drive system is that there would be no uh, uh, means there would be no kind of uh, driver intervention in the transferring of power to the front wheels actually there would be a computer unit or a uh, what we call a engine control unit or the electronic control unit which controls the power being transmitted to the four wheels actually with the help of the sensors according to the road conditions this way uh, this electronic control unit decides how much power must be transferred to the front wheels and how much power should be transferred to the rear wheels and this kind of four wheel drive systems or the all wheel drive systems are actually not fuel efficient guys 
you can see in all wheel drive system it's entirely not fuel efficient because it would be continuously transferring power to the front wheels and also the rear wheels so there would be a power loss in the power propeller shafts also which is called as the driver drive losses or the drive line losses so to avoid this mostly you could avoid such a kind of problem in the four wheel drive system but actually we can't entirely avoid this uh, kind of drive i mean uh, uh, losses in this uh, four wheel drive or the all wheel drive so guys now i am going to move on just uh, this uh, typical isometric or the 3d drawings of uh, the drive train types you can see first there would be a rear wheel actually sorry guys You can see over here in the first we are having a rear wheel drive as i told you from the engine the power is transmitted to the rear wheels when it comes to the front wheel drive which is at the side of you guys you can see the front wheel drive will be transferring the entire power to the front wheels when it comes to the four wheel drive you can see we'll be transferring the power to the four wheels so transferring power to the four wheels it requires two propeller shafts and at the same time it requires a specialized transfer case or the transfer gearbox actually for transferring the power so guys i have just received a call uh, just a minute for the inconvenience So guys, welcome back. I'm also back. A small inconvenience has occurred. Actually, I got got a wrong call. So that's yes, just you can feedback me right now. we are in between the topic anyhow just wanted a feedback how is the audio issue or any kind of doubts you have so that i could clear at the ending of the session or else if it's a simple doubt i would be clearing it right now hello so guys just post me in the live chat i could uh, get an update from you so that i could uh, adjust my explanation if possible so guys now we'll be moving on to the topic of engine placement so as mostly if we talk about engine placement this is also a very keen requirement of a vehicle because wherever you place the engine there should be an uh, advantage i uh, mean there would be an issue called as weight distribution so the engine weight should be distributed accordingly so that the vehicle would be balanced while it's working so guys uh, i'll be telling you there are three kind of engine placements so one is the front engine placement the other is the rear engine placement and the third one is the mid engine placement so guys let's see how are the engines being placed right now so you guys can see over here we have a front engine rear wheel drive and while has the, we have an other image called has the rear wheel drive also there is an a second image called has the 
rear wheel drive uh, rear engine rear wheel drive so guys actually i've got a complaint so guys th this webinar is actually long because uh, not too long we are at the last ending of the topic we'll be entering into the topic of aerodynamics so please and uh, thanks for your patience for listening till now and even i'm just continuing i'll just pace up my words so this is how the engine placement is done in the cars right now you can see in the front engine uh, rear wheel drive you can see engine is placed at the front and the drivetrain or the power is being transferred through a rear wheel drive train while as in the rear engine rear wheel drive what we what it happens is that engine will be placed at the rear and the power is also being directly transferred to the rear wheels so there is an other type which i have already told you mid engine rear wheel drive so guys actually what is the difference between the mid engine and rear uh, mid engine rear wheel drive and the rear engine rear wheel drive so you guys can see over here i'm just going to highlight it you can see over here a section mm -hmm. so you can see over here the transmission is after the engine in the mid engine or the mid engine cars while in the case of a rear engine cars the transmission is actually placed uh, the transmission is actually placed ahead of the engine in the rear engine cars but when it comes to the case of uh, mid engine or rear wheel drive cars you can see the engine is placed ahead or behind the person and after the engine there would be an uh, there would be the transmission placement so guys there would be the other fourth one which is most and commonly will be seeing in our commercial cars is the front engine front wheel drive so here the engine is also placed at the front and at the same time the drive train is also front wheel drive train so you guys can see how the mid engine is placed over here you can see the engine is placed ahead of the transmission when compared to the rear engine and this is the mid engine four wheel drive here we will be transferring the power to even the front wheel drives or the front wheels so guys most of the go kart engines actually uh, use this kind of mid engine uh, system or the mid engine placement method in their go karts you can see how the engine is placed ahead and the drive train is being connected to the rear wheels so guys this is the end of the topic about uh, the basic automobile technologies now we'll be entering into the topic of aerodynamics of a car guys just i will be taking only around uh, six minutes for this aerodynamics of a car so we'll be ending off very soon so what is the aerodynamics of a car aerodynamics helps the car to achieve top speeds actually so designing an aerodynamical car helps the car to reach top speeds because it reduces the drag forces and it also helps in saving fuel and also there would be when the drag issues are uh, eliminated then the car's vibrations also lessen themselves or, or or else they also get eliminated there is an also another problem when high speed cars travel very fast there is also a problem called as acoustic problems means uh, due to the air friction onto the materials of the vehicle there would be a kind of sound or noise or a buzz which is being heard to the driver and these issues are also being solved if the car is designed aerodynamically and at the same time aerodynamics of a car also add uh, beauty to the car it also adds an add on point to the aesthetics of the car so now we'll be talking about how uh, aerodynamics is affecting the car actually this is a box type car which we see in our uh, daily life so you can see over here the red arrow marks are actually the drag or the drag force which is being accumulated uh, at the front part of the car so due to the drag forces uh, being accumulated at the front part of the car it it uh, provides an unnecessary lift to the car which is actually highly dangerous and at the same time it also reduces the acceleration of the car because uh, when the lift happens to the car the traction between the wheels and the road surface actually reduces so when the traction reduces the acceleration rate also comes down so that's the problem over here 
so you can see how the lift uh, arrow marks are showing it upwards so when it enters uh, when the air enters to the rear side of the car there is an other problem actually which is also a drag force uh, and this drag force is actually caused due to the suction because here the air uh, air uh, air currents actually are traveling in a smooth shape and they are not traveling onto the surface uh, or they are they are just ripping out from the rear end of the surface so due to this uh, disengagement of the air currents from the rear end there is a suction being caused at the rear side of the car and due to this suction or vacuum what happens is that it would be holding back the car it would be adding an unnecessary mechanical loading on the car so this also the frontal drag and the rear drag what happens is that this rear suction actually reduces the efficiency reduce uh, means it increases the fuel consumption of the car so it also reduces the top speeds of the car so what happens if we reduce the suction behind the car and at the same time if we dis uh, reduce the drag of uh, at the front of the car then the car can reach its top speeds and uh, we don't have to sacrifice a large amount of torque from the car so guys that's the reason we need to design cars in an aerodynamical shape so now we'll be talking what's the use of spoilers in a race car actually not only in race cars guys even in the uh, most of the cars we'll be seeing a small kind of spoiler which is being placed in the cars so that how is the spoiler actually helping the car actually how is this an aerodynamic com uh, component i'm just going to explain it very simply so guys actually spoilers is an aerodynamic component which helps to improve the wheel's traction at the rear actually this spoiler provides a good amount of downforce stabilizing car at the top speeds and also improving the acceleration of the car it creates a downforce like this friends actually you can see over here the downforce is being created how it's being created here a downforce is acting on to the rear side due to the spoilers over here when the downforce or any kind of pressure uh, i mean any kind of uh, force if it's going to press the rear side of the car the driving wheels on the rear side actually get more and more traction if you achieve more traction between the road surface and the tire that means your acceleration rate increases so that your pickup also increases so this is a plus point if you are racing you could just win over your opponent so guys uh, this that's the reason we are using a spoiler over here so let's see how the cut section of the spoiler is actually how is it going to develop the downforce onto the rear side of the car so on the rear side of the car you can see the first part of the wing is actually the race car wing and uh, at the bottom uh, the bottom wing is actually an airplane wing here we are going to just compare it actually you guys know about the bernoulli's theorem in bernoulli's theorem what happens is that we will be using such a kind of uh, aerodynamical or aero uh, aerofoil shape so that we could provide lift to the aircraft but what happens in a racing car actually we are just inversing that wing uh, we are just in, we have inversed it so that uh, actually the lift becomes a negative lift and uh, it will be acting as a downforce to the car so at the top of the wing in a race car wing what happens is that the airflow would be like uh, there would be low uh, more pre uh, here we'd be having more pressure more air pressure while at the bottom of the wing of the race car wing we'll be having low pressure so guys at the bottom of the wing uh, wing actually will be having low pressure so some of my handwriting is not right for the scribbling i am actually sorry so guys now i'm just moving on to the next part so actually we are providing thrust to, i mean uh, we are just providing a uh, downforce onto the rear side but what happens to the front actually 
if you provide more uh, force onto the rear side the car may just imbalance and the front wheels may raise off so you are going to lose traction in the front wheels so how are you going to solve this problem and even at higher speeds what happens is that due to the drag uh, which is being built up at the front side of the car it also creates a kind of lift to the car that also decreases the traction of the front wheels so to avoid that actually this is the f1's spoiler wings which we are uh, being using in the f1 racing cars what they do is that they create a negative lift at the front side of the car also by doing so we'll be uh, increasing the traction of the front wheels and at the same time we can also the avoid uh, avoid the lift of the or the flying of the cars actually this is a very dangerous issue guys that's the reason i'm stressing on the front spoilers and the rear spoilers and the aerodynamics of the car i'm just going to show you a few pictures of the uh, the few accidents which are really deadly uh, in the next image how the accidents happen if the aerodynamics is not perfect for the car you can see over here here the car is actually lifting itself here the car has lift uh, has lifted itself you can see how dangerous it uh, it is for the racer inside the vehicle when reaching top speeds if the aerodynamic uh, aerodynamics of the car is insufficient this happens and it really is going to be dangerous if it's in a real life and actually even you can see over here it's a race car casualty the race car actually overturned itself actually it flew itself you can see at the top speed sometimes due to the design issues and due to the design in the aerodynamics uh, it really is a uh, dangerous thing if we don't design properly the aerodynamics for a certain speed i'm just telling you guys you can expect your car is a trash so even here you can see the car over here how they have been flying because of or due to the aerodynamics due to the aerodynamic issues so just think about the driver actually just think about the driver safety that's the reason most of the f1 cars or the high end super cars actually even they have top speeds they actually stress on the aerodynamics of the car they just even in their ads they tell you that this car is highly aerodynamic it has a huge downforce so that this car avoids such kind of car lift crashes so that's the reason guys actually so this is about the topic guys and this is the aerodynamic f1 concept and this is the future concept of the f1 cars actually you can see over the tires are also being uh, covered with some kind of bumpy material or the curvious material or a curvious component actually this curvious component is provided on the tires so that there would be no friction between the tires and the air currents which are being traveling uh, uh, onto the tires from the wings so this would be helping the aerodynamics of the car it would provide even more traction and also it would also improve the aerodynamics of the car or the aerodynamic air currents of the car so guys this is all about our webinar so guys if you have any kind of queries just post me in the comment section we are going to end the webinar and it's already over so guys actually this webinar as expected i have it would be uh, taking 2 2 hours actually i have skipped a lot of matter in this webinar actually i thought of telling you a lot of matter but actually i short listed it and i have just uh, made it even more compact but you are saying it's more too long but actually i hope you loved this webinar so you guys can just give me a live feedback how you felt about the webinar so you just okay, you guys can just comment me in the comment section and also in the live chat so guys so now i'm going to sign off and at the same time i have a small request from you guys please do subscribe my channel and at the same time please do like a like and share this video so don't forget to press the bell icon at the same time uh please subscribe my channel and also please follow mech talks so guys you can also uh, feel free to uh, post any kind of advices for me 
actually i thought of even conducting a zoom event if you are interested in uh, conducting a zoom event just leave me a comment in the comment section so that i could clear your doubts lively and i also and even in a zoom event it would be even more interactive so that i could uh, just give you a lot more of matter so thank you guys i'm just signing off so this is the end of the webinar So thank you one and all for attending the webinar. So guys, I also have a small request from you guys. Just leave a positive feedback so that more people can watch it. So also recommend uh, this channel to your friends so that we could share more mechanical topics from Mac Talks to your to your friends even. So guys, so this is the end of the webinar. Thank you for visiting me and visiting the webinar. And thanks for patiently listening my webinar.